great rock in a weary land. Appreciate our church several. It's a blessing to your heart. You're here. Not long ago, I began to think about it. I thought, Lord, how can I get people to see what I see in that scripture? And what I saw in that scripture was a man, maybe over in Egypt in the desert, and he's walking across here, and the sand is blowing back and forth, and you see the little tumbleweeds, like, you know, like on, on the old Western TV shows, rolling by like this, and his feet is unstable under him, and he's walking, and he's thirsty, and he's hot, and he's dry, and his sandals are going down in the sand, and the sun is beating down upon his head, and he's going like this, just not knowing how many more steps he can take. Then all of a sudden, he looks up into the far distance and sees a great rock. And I wonder what a man in that situation would think. I believe that if I was him, I would think of three things. I would think of shelter, I would think of stability, and I would think of security. And brother, as he walks across that uh, weary land, I imagine he would try to go to that rock. And I thought about that. I said, the Lord Jesus is our rock in a weary land. And I said, but Lord, how can I get people to see that? We no longer walk across deserts. I don't see anybody in here panning for a, a, draw, a drink of water. There's nobody in here uh, had to blaze a trail of miles through sandy hot uh, uh, trails to get here this morning. I don't believe anybody in here is done without water this week. I don't believe anybody in here has had uh, uh, 120 degrees sun boiling down on your head uh, 16 hours a day and then having to sleep out in the ground and scorpions and briars and thorns with you and tumbleweeds over you and sand blowing in your eyes and, and every time you take a step, there's nothing solid under you. When you step on sand, your foot kind of moves, you know. I don't believe anybody. How can I get people to see that? And the Lord began to deal with my heart and said, we may not be walking in a desert. We may not have sand blowing in our eyes, but we are in a wind land. Even the movie stars in California who have big fine houses and, not, and Cadillacs or Rolls Royce sitting out in the garage and brother have everything at their fingertips. Many of them, the reason they turn to drugs and alcohol and attempt suicide is because they are living in a weary land. They're not happy. They're not satisfied. They have nothing to look forward to. Even the athletes who sign baseballs and have the crowds flock to see them and the fans and the little boys and girls waving at them. Many are living in a weary land. The musicians who sell records by the thousands and have their pictures on the front of magazines, every one of them are struggling through this old weary land that you and I have to live in. They don't have meaning. They have no value. They don't, uh, they don't face the questions of all, and that is how to cope with the crises that come in your life. I'm saying to you this morning that college professors, businessmen, salesmen, athletes, musicians, news commentators, every one of them at one time in their life will come to a crisis in their life when it's almost impossible for them to cope with. Maybe they'll have a death in the family. Maybe the doctor will come in and say, you've got cancer. Brother, every one of us has broken through a weary land. You know that? Oh, I'm so glad this morning that walking through this weary land of sin that God out in front of us has placed a great rock. And the Lord's our rock in a weary land. I'm glad he's there, ain't you? Boy, wouldn't it be terrible to have to face this life if there were no Jesus. All of us are struggling through a weary land. Don't let them fool you. When they come on there and they say, ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the hottest star in Hollywood. Huh? And she comes out in the band and starts playing, da -da 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 -da, you know, and she smiles in front of everybody and that's just so wonderful. Oh, I'll just see her. And, uh, and as soon as she gets behind the curtain, she just, 
Give me another one. Give me another drink. That's the way those people live. They're paid to smile in front of them cameras. And a lot of people get the idea they're happy and got it made. Every known, popular, rich, well-known, famous person usually comes to the place in their life where they're just like a man in a desert. And they've got to have help from somewhere. Thank God there's a rock. Thank God there's somewhere for them to look to. Thank God that the Lord put a rock in a weary land. I remember when I was there. I remember when I was 17, I was in the weary land. When I was 18, I was in the weary land. And I was struggling through. When my foot would go down, it wouldn't stop solid. It would move. Now I had no shelter. Now I had no security. Somebody I heard the old song that said, The Lord's our rock, in Him we hide. A shelter in the time of storm. Thank God I found the Lord. Now let me say this morning, there is a great rock. Since there is a great rock, that means shelter in a time of storm. Get under the big rock. Every mother that's broken hearted over wayward boys and girls. There's mothers sitting here this morning that your heart is aching today over your children. And it's a weary land for you this morning. And Lord, I, I, we just had one give, asked for a prayer request in Sunday school a while ago for kids. There's mamas in here this morning that never know when the telephone's going to ring or maybe a knock on the door and somebody come and say, is so-and-so your son? You better come down to the hospital. You better come down. Brother, you don't think that'll put you in a weary land? You worry about your kids day in, day out, wondering what's going to happen to them, wondering where they're going to be called. Maybe some of them get busted for drugs. Maybe wind up in prison. Brother, that you worry about your husband. Maybe not know when he's coming home or your wife. You may, maybe think they're cheating on you or something like that. You don't think there's some people here today in a weary land. You look at those who are, who are in broken homes and maybe here living by themselves with a mate out yonder living with somebody else or living in sin. You don't think that'll put you in a weary land? Brother, that'll put you in just a weary position as walking through a desert on a day of a hundred 110 degrees. It's weary. It's weary. Every father that's discouraged because you're afraid you might lose your job and can't pay your bills and everything, that can really get you down. It can make you so far down, you'll have to go look up to see the bottom. You'll get so down and out, do you think you can't go on? You'll get to the place where you just think, feel like you can go another step. I'm telling you this morning, you think of every teenager trying to do right. These that go into their high school, right? like Paul and Daniel in the lion's den and walk in there saying, I'm going to do right. I'm going to serve God. It's a weary land. You think of all the little uh, people worried about their kids. You think of every little abused child in this world that goes to bed at night with their eyes wide open and a nervous wreck by the time they're 10 years old because some old man slapping them in the face or kicking them or burning them with cigarettes or sexually abusing them. I'm glad I've got the job I'm saying to that whole crowd, the white mother, the disguised father, the teenager, the little boy, there's a big rock. There's a great big rock. And in him there's shelter for the time of the storm. I don't care where you've been this morning or how bad it seems in your life. There's a rock in the weary land, thank God. There's a rock in the weary land. There's a rock. Jesus Christ is that rock. The Bible said that rock is Christ. Not only that, there's stability in a time of shifting sand. Not only is there shelter from a storm, and some of you are in the storm, you need shelter, and it's under that rock. But there's stability from the shifting sand that you're standing on. These are days when people are changing. You know what sand reminds me of? Sand reminds me of the way the world is right now. Nothing's solid. There's no stability. They'll come out evolutionist. They're saying, we'll give your children stability. They've changed their tune ten times. Now they're saying that Charles Darwin couldn't have been right, and they're right, and they'll find out in a few years they're all wrong. 
even the medical profession. And I thank God for every good advancement the medical profession has taken and all of that stuff. And I'm not belittling it, but even the medical profession many times will say, this is good for you, turn out it's bad for you. This is bad for you, turn out it's good for you. That breathing causes cancer, you know, so you better quit. And all that stuff. And they're always saying, uh, the, this is wrong, that's wrong, that's good, or that's bad. And, and I'm not, you know, I'm not criticizing. I, I appreciate everything they've done that's good, but did you know that's not where real stability comes from? They come out with a new morality and said, well, let's see, we're going to live this way now. And brother, our teenagers are growing up in a society that's going like this. Lord, you never heard such a mess in your life until you pick up a newspaper or flip a television channel around to the news broadcast and over here they're saying, uh, Mr. So-and-so, what do you think of our current crises on AIDS? And he's over there and he represents the national somebody and so-and-so somewhere. And he says this and that and you can tell he's got a slanted view because he's trying to cover up for his lifestyle. And then there's somebody over here saying this and somebody over here saying we ought to do this and somebody over here saying we ought to do that. And then here's a bunch of these ladies and they're going to all get together and protest the Pope coming over here because he won't let them be ordained and, and kill their babies inside of them. And he said we're, we're going to protest him and, and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and then here's the Pope and he's about you know he's going cuckoo anyway and they're here somebody on this and it's it's just like all these wrong ideas trying to straighten each other out. Have you noticed that? And everybody's got the answer and everybody's got a philosophy and everybody's got a doctrine and everybody Everybody's got a belief, and everybody's got the answer, and the, the hippies are up here saying, love, peace, man, everybody smoke dope and love each other and we'll house all our problems. And then everybody here said, no, we're all going to go over here and get us some bombs in case Russia shoots us, we're going to shoot them. And there's a thousand voices, and everybody's saying this, and they change constantly. But I'm so glad that down through the ages of time, there's been that great big rock. I mean, brother, he ain't shifting sand. The Lord Jesus wasn't one way. 1800 and another way in 1700 and now changed his doctrine and philosophy in 1900. He is a stable rock. He's a stable rock. Brother, you get on that rock, it don't move. I guarantee you, Miss C, who's been saved over 75 years this morning, could stand up and say, by way of testimony, he's the same Jesus as saved me 75 years ago. He has not changed with the change in time. He has not changed with the advent of nuclear warfare and AIDS. He has not changed on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I want to tell you young people here something this morning. You know what the best thing you can do? Get your feet firmly planted on Jesus Christ. He's the rock that won't roll. Amen. I tell you, brother, he's a rock that's always there, and I got news for you. He'll be the same tomorrow, and the next day, and a hundred years from now. He shows us stability. I'm glad it's like that. I'm glad when I got saved, I got to quit looking. I'm glad when I got saved, I didn't have to say, well, I'm still looking for something solid to get my feet on. I got my feet solid on the rock. There's a lot of things old brother Danny's failed in. And there's a lot of things I've messed up and a lot of things I still ain't good at and can't do and don't know how to do. But I'm telling you what, brother, this, this morning, I sure couldn't tell a difference when I got standing on something solid. When I was 16, 17, I was just like this, you know. I'd take a step and my foot go that way. I'd take a st step and my foot go that way. But when I was 18 years old, the Lord put me on a rock and boy, I've had solid footing underneath me ever since. That represents stability. Stability. And it's something you're going to need in your life. Uh, you've heard me tell a story, and I love to tell. I told it over and over and over, but I love it anyway. About the little boy who was out in the sea, and the boat went down or something, and they was all gone for help or something, and they put this little boy on a big rock, and water was all around him. And all night long, he should... He sat there and trembled and shook and the waves beat up against him and the wind blowed him and the salt water hit him in the eyes and everything. And the next day they come and rescued him and they said, uh, was you scared? Yeah. He said, did you get worried? He said, yeah. They said, did you shake? He said, yeah. But the rock didn't. But the rock didn't. Hey Amen. I'm telling you this morning, many times we shake. 
And many times we're scared. And many times we're bothered. And many times we don't know which way to turn. But underneath us there's a rock that don't shake. And underneath us there's a rock that don't move. He is a rock in a weary land. Some of them's a tripping. Some of them's a sipping. Some of them's a dancing. And some of them's a meditating. And some of them's a living it up. And some of them's guruing. And some of them's... Uh, hunting and pleasure and some of them's building big fine palaces and some of them doing that but I don't know about you but I want to stand on the rock of ages what I hold in my hand this morning and the faith that we have in Jesus is the only stable philosophy of life that stood the test of the ages without changing you know why? He's a rock. The rest of that stuff's sand. The rest of that stuff is, is unstable. The rest of that stuff is shifting. The rest of that stuff is shaking. If you ever get your feet planted just right in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to have stability. Let me say thirdly, it represents security. See, I'm walking up through here. There's a rock. Big old storm coming. The rock will hide me. Let me hide myself in thee. Boy, he's because he don't know what's coming tonight. He might be laying out there in the desert and a panther just come right up on him and eat him. But he said, if I can get right up under that rock real good and fence myself in, I'll be secure. I'll be safe and secure from all alarm. Now, you know what today, folks? Men are worried about the future. They're worried, and I don't blame them. If I didn't have the Lord Jesus Christ, I'd be real pessimistic about the future of our nation and this world. Religions give no hope. And the only, the only hope that mankind has to offer is this. Are you listening? If we had all the scientists and all the philosophers and all the psychologists and all the psychiatrists and all the historians and all the educators in the world here this morning, do you know what their best offer to our kids are is? The very best offer they got is hang in there, kids. Don't get something that'll kill you because the time, by the time you grow up, we might discover something that'll make you live longer and we're going to populate the moon. That's it. That's it. Y'all listen to me, folks. That's the hope of the world in the world's eyes. It's the only hope they got. They said, scientists are saying that the human race has only one possibility of survival, and that's move out of here and populate the planets. Well, that poses some problems, you know. What are you going to breathe when you get up there? Well, we'll just haul us a bunch of air up there. Are you, you're talking a little cuckoo, ain't you? You're going to build a big bubble and everybody going to live under it? Then we're going to have beer cans laying around up there on the moon. And people pulling switch blades on each other. And carrying diseases from here to there. You've had it, boy. You've had it. Have you ever wondered why God stuck planets out in outer space and just made them round and stuck us on here where we can't get off? He's trying to tell us we don't have no hope for the future unless he helps us. What are you going to do when you die? Well, we're making scientific accomplishments and I'm going to create, I'm going to leave my country with great memories and they're going to accomplish things after my death. Yeah, man. But what about you? What's going to happen to you? Well, I'll die. Then what? Do you want to die? No. Are you, are you wanting to die? No. Are, are you looking forward to dying? No. What's he trying to say? He don't have no hope. Oh, bless your soul this morning. 
me and you sit here as God's people, we've got hope for the future. As a matter of fact, we don't just hope, we know we have eternal life. We know we've passed from death to life. We know that we're saved. Don't you come to me with this baloney about nobody knowing that they're saved. I mean, speak for yourself, buddy. I mean, a lot of people just think nobody can't know because they don't know. You know that? They say, well, you don't really know. You're going to heaven. What if this happens? What if that happens? Well, speak for yourself, man. You may not be going, but I am. I had an old account set long ago, and I got a book here that promised me eternal life and he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Brother, I mean, we're on our way to glory. We're saved on our way to heaven. And it's only going to be a matter of time till we get there. There's the security we got in that rock. Old Pete. They asked him one time. He was an old fella that had a total assurance of his salvation. And people that are sure they're saved irritate people that are not sure they're saved. People who are trying to work their way to heaven are very irritated by somebody who's got assurance. And they say, well, you don't, you don't know that. And the reason they don't work their way to heaven. And he talked to this old fellow one time, and his name is Old Pete. And he went around and shouted and hooped and hollered, you know, praise God, I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to heaven. Ain't no doubt about it. I'm just as good as I with the door shut, and I'm in there on my way to glory. And somebody said one time, they said, now, wait a minute here, Pete. What if God took you down there and surprised you and dropped you in hell? And he said, well, I'd just look up to God, and I'd say, God, if i got to go to hell, Jesus has got to go with me. He said, what? He said, that's right. Jesus has got to go with me. He said, I'm part of him. He's part of me. I belong to him. He belongs to me. He said, he'd never leave me nor forsake me. Wherever I go, he's going. If I go to hell, he's going with me. Woo! Boy, ain't that a thought? Ain't that a thought? Let me tell you something, brother. When you got in that rock, son, God put you on something solid and secure. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You have security. You have security. You are secure in Jesus Christ. Amen. An old lady one time took it even further. She's a young preacher one time said, how do you know you're going to heaven? She said, I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved. And he said, but yes, ma'am, but what if you turned out to be wrong and you should sink into hell? She'd say, well, God would lose more than I would. He said, why? And she said, all I'd lose would be my soul. He would lose his good name because he promised if I'd believe on his son, I'd go to heaven. Hallelujah, brother. That's security in a time of uncertainty. Do y'all folks realize we let the devil cheat us? We let the devil cheat us out of having a hallelujah time. When bro Listen, if those people, as I mentioned a while ago, movie stars, singers, if they had the assurance that me and you have of going to live in a perfect city and never getting old and never dying, they'd give every bit of money in the world for the peace and assurance that me and you have sitting right here in this church this morning, but we take it for granted, you know. We kind of get to where we don't appreciate it, you know. But I'm telling you, we've got a rock that we are secure in. He ain't never changed his mind. He ain't never broke a promise. He promised me if I trust him, he'd save me. I'm on my way to glory. And in the Lord I hide a shelter in the time of storm. Secure whatever ill betide, a shelter in the time of storm. Yes, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, a weary land, a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. I ask you this. Man, Hudson Taylor spent a night with a fellow one time, and he's trying to tell him that even though when you don't realize it or not, you are in Christ, you abide in Christ. The next day, the fellow asked him, he said, let me ask you this. How do you know you're abiding in Christ when you're not even conscious of it? I mean, when you're, your mind's on something else and you're thinking about other things, how do you know you're still in Jesus? And he said, last night when I went to sleep, did I cease to abide in your house because I was unconscious? He said, I slept in your bed all night, but I've been here in your house even though I didn't know it. I'm telling you, son, when you're in Jesus Christ, conscious of it or unconscious of it, you're in Him. And you've got security 
like the old black fella who was walking up the hill one day and he said, I know I'm saved. And some years ago, and somebody said, he's carrying a big old sack of potatoes. And they said, well, how do you really know it for sure? And he took about three steps and dropped that bag of potatoes. And he said, how do I know I dropped in potatoes? I didn't turn around and look and see them fall. They said, how do you know? He said, I felt the weight lift off of me. And he said, years ago, I come to Jesus as a sinner, and I felt the guilt of my sins fall off of me. I know I'm saved. I know my sins are gone. Now, you know what our problem is? We forget a lot of times just what the Lord, you think about that load he lifted off of you that night at the old-fashioned altar when you came and prayed to him. My, when you came to that rock and he moved that heavy load, what a wonderful day that was. Let's see here. Over here is Mr. and Miss Rhonda Lee and Rhonda Wheeler. How long have you been Miss Wheeler, Rhonda? Five years. She has been Miss Wheeler for five years. Ever since she stuck her hand out and they put that ring on her finger and the preacher said, you've done it. She's been Miss Wheeler. Now I want to tell you something, brother. Ever since that night, I ain't been what I ought to be. And I'm ashamed like crazy of the life I've lived. But ever since that night, I stuck my hand put my hand in His. I've been property of the Lord Jesus. And I'm on the rock. You say, well, I don't believe it. It don't matter what you believe. I'm on it anyway. You say, Brother Danny, i got my doubts about you. Well, I do too a lot of times. But He's got confidence in me. I'm part of him. He's part of me. I found the rock. He don't really and I wouldn't trade him for everything this world's got to offer. Jesus, how the very word does overflow with sweetness and light and joy and love and life filling the air with precious oil. He's the answer to all our problems. He's the spring of all our courage. He's the earnest of all our hopes. The charm against all our foes. The remedy for our weakness. The supply for our wants. The fullness of our desire. He's mighty to our ears. He's altogether lovely to our sight. He's manna to our taste. He's living water to our thirst. He's shallow from the heat of this world. A refuge from the storm. A pillar of fire by night and a morning star and the sun of righteousness. Somebody to lead you, guide you, help you, encourage you. That's a rock in a weary land. I'm telling you here this morning, if you're living your life without him, you are being cheated into that wonderful presence of the Lord being in your life. I don't see how you stand it. I don't see how you live in the trying to make it by yourself without running to the rock. All right, we're going to stop right there. You've been listening to the message this evening on the subject, A Great Rock in a Weary Land. And I know that some of you out there today are having problems so big that you think there's absolutely no way out of the situation you're in. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ stands there with his hands outstretched. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. Uh, he'll encourage you. He'll help you to live for him. Why don't you come to the rock in the weary land that you're in? Uh, put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. I've seen people come to him uh, with problems with alcohol. A man came to our church recently, been drinking 30 years, and God touched him and gave him refuge in that rock in a weary land. Helped him out, straightened his life up. Thank God he's able to do it. He can help you today. No matter what your hang-up is, he can help you. Why don't you come to the great rock in a weary land? We've got to go for now. Hope you'll do that. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Till tomorrow, this is Danny Castle saying, May the Lord bless you is my prayer.